Decorating Pages is a podcast dedicated to taking you behind the scenes of the designs of your favorite TV shows and films. Each episode, I'll be sharing design stories from some of Hollywood's most famous sets. Interviews from set decorators, production designers, directors, and actors about creating the look of TV and film, about their design inspirations, and stories that take sets from page to screen. Hello, and welcome to Decorating Pages. I'm your host, Kim Wanab. How are you? Happy holidays. I hope you're in a festive mood because I have some holiday films that hopefully I'm you've probably seen but have you ever looked at the decor of it and how it affects uh, your holiday spirit so I thought I'd uh, talk about a couple films that uh, definitely inspire me and um, some classics and some new ones and yeah um the Golden Globes uh, were announced this morning and I don't really think there was many surprises at least I didn't think so I mean I think Elvis being nominated was a surprise for me I actually haven't seen it but it's still surprising to me (laughs) and I think White Lotus being nominated for a best show is kind of having finished it last night I liked it I think the last three episodes were good it's not as good as the first season um and it should just be one big promotion to visit italy i think (laughs) the italian tourist board needs to just snap pictures of 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 where they shot and just me i I, all i want to do is go there um but anyway golden globes coming back this year and um yeah really didn't see too many surprises i i kind of think Dahmer's gonna sweep that's my prediction. Um, on the film side, oh, I don't know. On the film side, I mean, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's some of them, I don't even know. I think the Fablemans will probably sweep in whatever category they're in, to be honest, because they all love Spielberg. So I think that one's a, that one's a given. So uh, what else? Yeah, having finished White Lotus last night, I think it was a good ending. I'm not going to give anything away. Um, it makes me want to go to Italy on a yacht and eat pasta and go for a swim. <laughs> but man, uh, what an opportunity for anyone who got to go with them to shoot that. I just think it's fantastic. But I think they used mostly, I lo- was looking at the credits, I think they used most local crew. Um, but beautifully done. Not as good as the first season. And I don't even know if it's, I don't know. I'm kind of let down by it. That's all I'm going to say. I finished the Quentin Tarantino book, Cinema Speculation. And I couldn't believe it was over. It could, I, because he reviews and goes into depth about 10 or 12 films from the 70s that um, inspired him. And then he speculates if, um, what if um, Brian De Palma had directed Taxi Driver. I think that was one. Um, it's, I just wish that I could articulate the way that he talks about these films. And it made me really think about this podcast and how bad I am at articulating um, how great it is. Uh, not how great it is, how, how, how things are great. And I have no words for them, just like I just did. So yeah. I try, I mean, I try to expand my vocabulary, it's just not working. I think I'm too old. I would really love to learn Italian, but I pro- that's probably never going to happen. Uh, anyway, I love the book. I hope there's some sort of part two where he does 80s movies. And um, there's definitely pieces in here that make you realize why he casts Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Um to bring him back in a sense. And then he goes on for this love of Sylvester Stallone and um, how much he loves, hates Paul Schrader, the writer. And um, there's just really, um, I mean, directors I never thought of. George, I think it's George Peck and Paul. My God, if he said that name like a million times. But anyway, I really enjoyed it. If um, 
And I really enjoyed that he be, I guess he wrote down every movie he ever went to and hearing like, oh, I went to the Downey Six or I was at the Inglewood Drive-In or we were up in Brentwood. Like he tells you where he went to see all these movies, which if you live in LA, you're kind of like, whoa, this guy put some miles on just to go to the movies. So I do, I really enjoyed it. And I think it's probably a great little stocking stuffer. Uh Um, things else. I also finished the crown again. I don't know. Was not really into this season. Beautifully done, as I always say. But this season and where they ended, I'm not a fan of, I guess. I guess it's just not. My husband was like really down on it and maybe that affected me. I mean, I still think it's a great show and the production value and the costumes and the locations and I don't know. Just wasn't in with some of the casting and I don't know. But it's still a great show. I was not into this season. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about, but I, I always um, watch the documentary little series on Netflix, Somebody Somebody Feed Phil, about the writer, producer, Phil Rosenthal, who travels the world and eats. Um, he is the writer, creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. He's hysterical, I think. And um, he's got an episode on this season uh, about Philadelphia. And it just made me happy because he went to one of my, che- one of my favorite cheesesteak places, Delisandro's. He went to my favorite ice cream place, Franklin's Fountain. And so and it was really, and um, Reading Terminal is always great. If anybody wants to go eat in Philly, you should watch that uh, episode. So I always, too, love to look at the architecture of where he's going. And I started the Croatia episode last night. And just these tiny little streets and um, the towers. The, he's in a bell tower. I just Whenever he travels, he really tries to get into the city. So architectural design wise, there there is an element there, too. And he's funny. So I like it. Um I really, as always, I want to talk about Sister Wives, but I have some important news. I have found people who want to talk about Sister Wives, and guess what? They're on TikTok. Yep. There are so many people TikToking about Sister Wives and theories, and yeah, I just, I'm in love with, like, a group of people who are obsessed like I am with the show and can't talk to it with anyone. (laughs) Um... I watched a lot of Christmas movies in the last couple of weeks, too, getting ready for this. I did check out The Santa Clauses, which is on Netflix. Um, it's kind of like The Santa Claus with Tim Allen, but now it's a series and how he's getting older and over it and um, moving on. We only watched one episode, but the design of it was super cute by Melanie Jones and set decorations by Maylee Cassara. I think that's her name. I think Jerry Kilter jumped in there too on decorating this on an episode. I'm not sure if this was the one or something else. So sorry if I'm giving credit where credit is not due. But um, it was cute. And the boys were into it a little bit. And then they just wanted to watch Paw Patrol. So yeah. I, uh, what else? I thought also I'd give you a couple tips if you're struggling to find some holiday decor to purchase. Um, home goods always hit home goods I swear the pricing and the the pieces that they have I always find are really interesting and good and a little different um online I have hit frontgate um frontgate.com grandin road uh, dot com they have bigger pieces like if you need like lit up trees or garland or big um ornaments things like that um holiday rugs type of stuff I've always liked that etsy always because you can find intricate little one-of-a-kind pieces little ornaments and um personalized stuff especially for gifts i just (laughs) spent so much money on etsy getting people gifts this weekend but they're gonna love them um i dare to say hobby lobby they have a good selection of um holiday decor i can't uh can't really deny it and then sneaker little tip here touch a class <laughs> touch a class.com which I have talked about before and it's one of my go-to little I think a secret little source 
for very specific character dressing. Um, but they have some holiday stuff and you can get it engraved. The problem with, here's the problem with Touch of Class, shipping. The weird, it's super weird, like you're like, oh my gosh, I need all this. I can get it. I need it by next week. Great. And then like three days goes by and then they'll call you and they'll be like, hey, so about the shipping. And you're like, oh. I lost three days. What are you talking about? Um, I've had that problem multiple times. So if you're not in a rush to get something, it's great. If you are in a rush, I suggest you call to place the order so you can take care of your shipping costs just like right then. There's my tip. So yeah, and always Amazon. Who are we kidding? Yeah. Hey, so after this episode at the end, I do have a little gift for you. A little merry little gift, but we'll get to that. So, are you in the holiday spirit? This week's episode, I'm talking about how the holiday decor of classic films gets us in the festive mood. Films, the classics like Miracle on 34th Street to modern day gems like Elf. Um, I watched almost all of them in the last couple of weeks. So, here we go. I've broken them down into a couple categories. Let's go with the action. <laughs> action. Um, Die Hard. I know. You never really thought of it as a Christmas movie, but people are saying it's a Christmas movie, and it kind of is. Jing, like, you know, ho, 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 when he writes it on the guy's shredder and the Christmas hat, and I guess it is. And they promoted it in the last couple years as a Christmas movie. So why not? Christmas movie. Um, <laughs> production designer Jackson Dagova and set decorator Philip Leonard. Uh, it's a classic. We, you know, some lines. Um, filmed it um, in the Fox Tower over on the Fox, off of the Fox lot off of Pico. Um, and having worked at Fox for a long time, and I, on impeachment, my office looked out onto that building. It just constantly reminded me of of being little and seeing that movie and then working somewhere in the movies on the lot where I can see that building every day. It's just crazy to me. The One of the shots that's always crazy is when um, John is, um, um, Bruce Willis is on the top floor and he's looking, he called 911 and he's looking for the sirens and the firemen to start coming, the police. And they're coming down Olympic and you see Ralph's uh, food store and the old Ralph sign. It's always like so crazy to me that then I lived in LA and I went to Ralph's. So yeah, but holiday festiveness. Now decor wise, this is typical late 80s office design. It's glass, it's black leather, it's chrome. Um, it's uh, a disaster site, but that the even the design of that table that he's like squirming underneath, it's it's typical, uh, uh, like very Wall Street '80s <laughs> design. Now Christmas design, not much in there. Let's be honest. But um, until you go to like their house and look at the kids when he's, they got them on the news. But yeah, so that's my action category. That was Die Hard scary okay gremlins gremlins is kind of scary i tried to put it i was like oh maybe the boys could watch this and i was like uh-uh, uh-uh abort um gremlins is such a classic and um the snow and all of the the little town vibe that you get the decor of that is it a japanese street that he's walking through in the beginning um and then just I don't know. There's something I, I just love about Gremlins and um, that poor story of the dad dying in the chimney. That's very Christmassy, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, Gremlins, when... Uh, doesn't, don't they get zapped by, like, the lights, too? That's... It's just a great movie. And two, having worked at Universal and being on that back lot, it's crazy to me working there and being there where Gremlins was shot. It's crazy. And that back street, that back lot street where his house was. Um, I don't know if they show that on the tour, but they should. 
Uh, another scary, I think it's kind of scary movie or just a regular movie. I don't know. Scrooged. Scrooged. Um, production designed by Michael Riva and decorated by uh, my favorite, Linda Descana. Um, God, I loved Scrooge. Another, you know, 80s uh, office uh design and then going into all those houses and the flashback from the 50s and then contemporary seeing people's trees in their house when they're getting their gifts um the whimsical effect of it and um it's just one of my favorite movies that um during the holidays I love Bill Murray and um when he gets really like jacked at the end I just love it uh and Bobcat Goldthwait I think is pretty good in it so not, uh, you know, not like cheery holiday, but it's a good move. It gets me in the mood. Scrooge gets me in the mood. Um, now classic. All right. Classic movies for decor. Well, classic movies. I don't know if you think it, when I watch A Wonderful Life, I don't think about set decoration and I tried and I looked and, you know, it's sweet and it's, you know, like the little town and obviously and the little houses and blah, blah, blah and the little business and banks and the pharmacy uh but here's the thing I don't really like a wonderful life (laughs) sorry I don't think it's such a great movie and to be very honest it didn't do well when it first opened up and only I think in the late 70s early 80s when they started to rerun it during the holiday season because channels needed programming is when it became a bigger hit so maybe everybody's kind of on my page too but um, designed by Jack O'Kee and um, decorated by Emil Curry. It is a classic. I mean, you can't take it away from it. It is a classic. And that 40s design. And um, I always, um, uh, the other one was um, the next film too, looking at wallpaper and how um, the the wood and the wainscoting and like all of their casings on the wall and that tells the story of the era um those little things I mean obviously the costumes and and everything too but it is it is like a good movie to watch it's just not one of my I don't if I never saw it again I'd be fine now Miracle on 34th Street I need to watch at least every couple years the original people the original um Art director Richard Day um, and Richard Irvin, and then set decorators Ernest Lansing and Thomas Little are credited on the film. Uh, So the boys and uh, and and we watched it, and I was like, "Uh, maybe they shouldn't watch it because they're really doubting Santa in this. But you know, it's all about believing in Santa, and he's on screen so much that they actually really liked it. I don't know if they knew what was going on, but. They liked it. Um, again, the wallpaper of these New York apartments and the big uh, windows that look out onto, um, I don't know if it was Fifth Avenue. I'm, I don't know where the, what street the parade goes down, but, um, and also the, the placement of these two apartments that her apartment could look into the guy's apartment if they had the shades open and then he she could look out into the street it was kind of weird but i guess that's true if i don't know if you had your shades open on both ends of your apartment that your neighbor could look right through it and then get a park view it's kind of cool but i I don't know i don't know if that was based on reality (laughs) um the department stores i have no idea if they shot these like locations and, but, um, and then I know that they probably built the courtroom um, I, I they built the apartments and everything, but the locations of the department stores and all is kind of fascinating for the time. And also using real footage versus what they had, um, in the Macy's Day Parade. I think, you know, it's just, it's such a f- perfect little film and, Everything about it, I think, gets me in the Christmas mood. I do love, love, love Miracle on 34th Street. Um, Another favorite, design-wise for me, is White Christmas. Um, Art director is Roland Anderson and um, Hal Pernia and set decorator Sam Comer uh, and Grace Gregory. 
are credited. Now, White Christmas, I don't, again, I don't think it's one of the greatest movies, but design-wise, how much color is on screen and their dance performances and the songs. And then like when he, they show him in the war and it's like all these blown up buildings, costumes and everything about it. I feel like snow, it gets you into the mood. I don't know. I just, I like White Christmas. I think it's, it's a happy little film and I hope it, I I always hope like all these old films don't get forgotten with like new generations and that's why I want my boys to, you know, watch it and not forget how fun life used to be or apparently was. (laughs) But yeah, I love White Christmas. Now here's one of my all-time favorites and I'll tell you why. TBS Network has a lot to do with this because growing up, TBS would show a Christmas story for 24 hours starting at 8 at night till on Christmas Eve till the next day. And my family through my um, high school years and and older, my mom worked nights. Um, My mom and dad both worked in the casino and my mom worked nights. My dad works days. So she would always have to work Christmas Eve. And so it was always like we would watch a couple hours of Christmas Story, go to Midnight Mass, and then go to come home, go to bed, and then we wake up, mom's there, you open your gifts, we have breakfast, and then we watch Christmas Story for a couple hours while you play with your shit or or figure out your returns, and then um and then we all hop in the car and go to our family's house. But yes, a Christmas Story to me, design wise is so perfect because it starts out right away with the snow and a little house and the house looks all warm and then just the 40s design aspect of this house that's kind of poor but they were actually pretty well off because he had like a good job and you know they had a working furnace they could go out to eat like um on all of the furniture and the patterns in their um in their bedding and I mean the iconic lamp of the leg lamp you can't get away that it's it's a lamp that has once you see that lamp you know exactly what movie we're talking about so I I just have always loved the movie and it brings back a lot of memories and I would watch it for 24 hours if I could I don't there's bits and pieces you can come back in at any moment and every scene means a little something I know that there is now a sequel to this that they did. I haven't watched it yet. Probably should have watched. Probably should have watched that before I did this. I didn't get to it. Um, so I'll check that out. I'll let you know. I don't have high hopes because it's so iconic to me, the film. So, um, yeah. Oh, and so that was production designed by Ruben Freed and set decorator Mark Freeborn. So, yeah. I feel like I've seen a, uh, like a making of, of that and they show the house in Cleveland and, um, the store, the, the store that they went to and the little town. I even love, I mean, the, the, the dressing in the window when all the kids are just salivating over the gifts that they might get is so perfect of how you used to either, you know, look by uh, the windows at the store or like we would get the catalogs in the mail, the Toys R Us catalogs, and you would just be like, oh my God, I want all of this. So Christmas Story is probably one of my favorites. And then one of my favorite classics is The Little Princess. Oh my God, I love The Little Princess with Shirley Temple. Bernard Hertzburn, um, Hans Peters, and are the art directors on that and set decorator Thomas Little. Oh, the Little Princess is so heartbreaking. But again, there's this Victorian uh, girls' school home that she is sent to and all of the woodwork in it is so gorgeous. And the difference that they show from her room when she has money to when she doesn't and they put her up in the attic even the furnace and um and the little street that they walk down all the time um the children's hospital or the veterans hospital that they go to um 
it's just so classic. That was like, I think they, I thought it was 1939 or 1938. The Little Princess came out. Um, I just love that film and I love Shirley Temple so much. <laughs> so, and I actually forgot, I didn't think of it as a holiday film. And then it was up on, like, you may also like holiday uh, picks on my Amazon Fire. And then I was like, oh, is that? And then I put it on and I was like, it is. It is a warm little holiday movie. So don't don't forget about that one. Now, I'm going to move into contemporary, which none of us can forget. Home Alone. No one can forget Home Alone. Um, production designer John Mudo and set decorator Eve Cauley. Now, I once, only in the past couple of years, saw a making of or some blurb about how they wanted the whole house interior decorated like it was Christmas all year long type thing. So if you look, there's so much pattern and wallpaper in every room that is associated with like red and green and Christmas and Christmas and Christmas um, that I always feel like this movie can put you in the holiday spirit even though the kid was forgotten but the house I mean um you know all of these houses in John Hughes films just become so iconic I you could show me any house from any of his films and I would know which picture it was and obviously the home alone house we've all looked at and my god to me it was sort of like oof these are rich people. Look how big that house is. Um, all the dormers and all the windows and all of the lights. And um, and then to look inside with that big staircase and the big kitchen and the master bedroom with the four post bed. And so it was always kind of like, look at this big house this kid has. And he got the whole attic. He got the, he got the whole thing to himself. I was jealous. But... I think decor wise, it is so overdone just to beat you over the head with Christmas that it works. It totally works for the film. Um, So yeah, and I was going to put in Love Actually and I was looking through set photos and it is, it is good, but it's not one of my favorites as a um, holiday movie. I don't know. I like The Holiday. The Holiday Production Designed by John Huntman. And there's quite a few set decorators here, but I believe it was Cindy Carr and also um, David Smith, Cynthia McCormick, and Al Hobbs is also credited. I think there's four decorators on there, but because I think they did reshoots or something. Um, The Holiday, to me, a Nancy Myers film, is just so perfectly done in a style that you want to be a part of, or at least I do that and to to go from such different looks of people's personalities in their homes and what you feel is relaxing and what you feel is like you can escape to I just always really like that movie and I think it's super sweet and I love Kate Winslet so the holiday is one of mine now I saved fantasy for last here's the thing to be How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey one, is awesome. I don't care what you say. Design-wise, it's awesome. And I was a PA at the time, and I had to pick up a script uh, at Universal or something, and I, like, parked my car, probably where I shouldn't have, and walked through the stages, and the door, the elephant door was open, and I could see inside to, it was Whoville. And like my jaw dropped of like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was like, well, screw it. I'm going to walk through. So I walked right through the set and everything. And uh, I just quickly did it because I was so scared. But trying to just absorb every single color and design and, and what was going on. It was just so gorgeous to me. So... I have that memory of this film, which makes me love the decor of it. But the production designer, Michael Kornbluth, who would be a, an amazing person for me to get on this podcast, if anybody knows him, um, and set decorator Meredith Boswell, I just think did such a phenomenal job in bringing that book to life. I love it. I just love that film. And 
it is a little scary. Like I had put it on and the boys were around. I was like, eh, this Grinch is actually a little scary because he like stuffs the little girl in the mail chute and all. And they were like, what's that? What's he doing? And I was like, oh, he, look, he's going to help her. And then I was like, oh, all right, let's see what else is on. Elmo Nutcracker. Um, so Grinch Stole Christmas. I think that was 2001, maybe 2002. Yeah, I just love it. The other one. <laughs> I think is perfect is Elf. Elf, production designer Rusty Smith and set decorator Joanne Hubert. Elf is so cute. It's uh, the way the the way to convey the North Pole that all the decor and everything is whitewashed. I just think it was genius because everyone in their wardrobe popped off of that set so much. And of obviously Santa, but like all the elves and the green and reds and yellows. And I just think it was conveyed perfectly. I, I mean, when he goes into like New York City and you're, it's a very actually good way to look at contemporary. I think it was 2003. Um, what was going on? And this is something that as now having to do a period, <laughs> quotes, of 2003, you just start to strive to look for things that were made the, in those years that were contemporary to look at like, oh, what was happening? What furniture and everything? So it's actually pretty good. Like their New York apartment and everything in the office. If anybody needs a 2003 reference, it's a pretty good one. Um, in New York City. So I just love Elf. I think it's hysterical also. I just think he's fantastic in that movie. So, Elf. Now, last but not least, one that I didn't realize was a was a Christmas movie, but it kind of is. And it's probably my favorite Batman. Batman Returns. Production designed by Bill Welsh and set decorator Cheryl Krasick. I love Batman. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is perfect. I think Danny DeVito is perfect. I always have loved that film. I always thought it was better than Batman, Michael Keaton, Batman. The second one was always better to me. But it is. Remember they kidnap the chick and she's, she's in her little like Santa suit all cute and then she jumps off the building. Um, and they got the big Christmas trees at City Hall. I had totally forgotten that it's a Christmas movie. So... <laughs> I think it is. Uh, if Die Hard can be a Christmas movie, I kind of think Batman can be a Christmas movie. Again, um, all of these films have inspired me in some way, and I am thankful um, that all of these designers and decorators put such hard work into the designs of these films and um, gets me into the holiday spirit. Um, I think one of... The I would I almost put home for the holidays on here but I did I think it was Thanksgiving <laughs> but I love that movie too um but thank you to production designers and decorators for for doing all that now let's talk about next week next week is ta-da the hundredth episode of decorating pages isn't that cute so I have a little gift for you I have put together a set decorator or decorating quick reference information packet. And it took me a while. <laughs> it took me a long time. I'm putting it up on Etsy. And um, I just, I mean, I have these references all the time, but I've never collected them together. And I know as a decorator, quick reference of sizes and... Um, sizes really and uh, quantity helps quickly decorate so it can be for set dressing orders it can be for scouting locations it could be for yourself if you're decorating your apartment so i have put together a template um 18 different templates and they go from mattress size guide pillow size guide rug sizes for your living room dining room bedroom coffee table sizes table settings formal and banquet uh, table linen size chart which is key because I did all the overlay sizes too upholstery size charts for chairs and sofas curtains how to measure and size them 
conference table rooms, a seating guide of how many people should be at what size table, how to hang art, which is an overall, lighting fixtures, lighting hanging guides of how far a, a sconce should be off the floor, um, some quick reference floor plan symbols because a lot of people don't know how to read floor plans, but you do it as you learn as you go along. But here's a couple of references, and also a template of location dressing. Like if you go to a location and do, how many lamps do I need? How many rugs do I need? Drapes? How what kind of furniture do I need here? It's all in one page, so it'll be easy if you're scouting. So. As my gift to you, my favorite subscriber, I'm gonna give you 50% off using the promo code MARY50 on Etsy. Yeah, and I also put the link in the email that comes out with this episode, so if you're driving now, you can just click on that later. But yes, thank you so much for listening, and Merry Christmas, and uh, it's all in prep for next week's 100th episode. If you have any guests that you have loved, if you have anything that you've learned from this, please let me know. I'm just going to be doing a little retrospective of our guests and how happy this podcast has made me because you listen. So thank you. I hope you got an earful. I'm Kim Monop for Decorating Pages. The perfect way to float through the holidays is in style. Stogie Floaty Luxury Pool Flute, available on Etsy.com. Welcome to Pro Tips for the Pros, brought to you by Floor and Decor Bailey's Crossroads. In this series, we'll explore essential advice for professional contractors to deliver outstanding renovation results. Let's dive in. Clear communication is key to a successful renovation. Keep the customer informed at every stage of the project addressing any concerns or questions promptly to maintain trust and satisfaction. Thank you for joining us for this pro tip on planning thorough renovations. Stay tuned for more expert advice brought to you by Floor and Decor Bailey's Crossroads. A lot of people tolerate ordinary. Ordinary bathrooms, kitchens, entryways. Well, not on your watch. If you're a pro, you've got a new partner in town. Floor and Decor. From tile to wood to stone, Floor & Decor has more styles and job lot quantities of Schluter, Mape, Ladacrete, and other brands pros trust. Come see a whole new way to wow with Floor & Decor. Coming soon to Bailey's Crossroads.